Well, I decided to get a new tool for the man cave down here. So I thought, well, I'll try and pick up one of these Weber uh, mini metal laves. This is an 8x14. And for $600, this is exactly what I expected to get. I worked for a company called D&T Tool and Machine. I was a repair technician. Uh, so I'm fairly familiar with this type of stuff. But for the money, you know, it's the old saying, you get what you pay for. It's exactly what I expected for $600. So I basically had to disassemble the whole machine and clean it up. It was pretty covered with oil. And then uh, had to readjust everything. And then I put air, uh, silicone grease on everything to make sure everything slides smoothly and evenly. But all the adjustments and everything had to be completely readjusted. And then... Uh, it does have some stuff that I like, like uh, the chuck here it has a self-centering chuck, has an extra set of jaws, and the, and the steps and the jaws are reverse in the jaws that are on there, and it depends on uh, what you're doing with it. But I've I've had to take them out in uh, several different times, but they also are numbered like they're supposed to be. It's very hard to see, but they're they're down in there. Uh, you can see numbers on that right there, and uh, the chuck is numbered underneath there and again it is very very hard to see the numbers but they are numbered one two and three so you have to pay attention to that because they have to go in order to put those on there and then it came with this just a standard tool holder which i don't like uh i replaced it with a wedge type tool holder that's adjustable now there's a piston type that has a piston that comes out right here and pushes out on this part I hold it in place and there's the wedge type. The wedge type is a lot better. And this is fully adjustable. These are hard to get. Uh, and they are fully adjustable up and down. So this thing is designed to use 3 8 uh, carbide cutters in. Uh, you can't put anything bigger or smaller in the fixed one because it doesn't line up on your, your work properly. But the adjustable one, you can use a quarter, 3 8 half inch, whatever you want to use it. And right now I got a quarter inch. Uh, but I have three eights on order. I just don't have them yet. So uh, you just loosen the handle up here uh, and you can turn this dial right here up and down to adjust any height you want. If you want to be in the center, if you're a little lower, if you're cutting, it depends on what you're doing. And then uh, when you move the handle, it just pushes this wedge down and just really locks it in there tight. And of course, to spin the thing around the circles, you just have to take your wrench there and loosen up this nut and you can spin this thing around in circles right now i don't have that loose but that is a much better system uh than what they have so like i said you get what you pay for and then it comes with a dead center which is pretty useless uh i turned around and got a live center for it there and you can see it there and then it has a uh uh mt2 and an or JT3, which stands for Morris Taper 2, and Jacobs Taper 3 is what that stands for. So I got that uh, for my end stock there. And they have all these handles on there, just made out of aluminum, and really they're quite loose and crappy. They just have a, a, a screw in there, uh, and they don't fit very well. I didn't like them at all. So I made all new ones. Uh, you can see... I just have a longer handle. Mine fit quite tight, quite nicely. Uh, basic. I just have a basic bolt in here with a piece of plastic over it, but it turns very, very smoothly. Uh, they're a lot longer, and I can turn smaller increments than what they had. Uh, I had to make a bushing for this one because this one was bushed out, so I had to make that bushing to put them on there. But I went ahead and replaced all three of those. I, I just didn't like them. And as you can see, there was a uh, backsplash on there, uh, but it created a lot of shade and, you you know, it, it took away a lot of lighting. So I removed it. Now, I'm not going to tell you to do this because you beginners out there don't want to do any of this stuff. You want to leave all the safety features on there. But I also had a cover over the chuck here and it hooks to this post sticking out. And if you don't have it down, it won't come on. If you have it up, it turns it off. So if it's down, it'll come on. Uh, but that's for your safety. Don't remove that unless you're a seasoned veteran. And then they had another thing over the top of the buttons. Well, it was a safety shutoff. 
so every time you wanted to turn it back on, you had to flip the safety shut off up, turn the button on and flip it back down, back and forth, so it was a waste of time. So I, I removed that as well. Uh, but the rest of the stuff isn't too bad. You can see I kept the wheel on this one, but I did change the knob to a solid knob, uh, but it's a bigger than I like. So I'm gonna spin that a little bit and turn that down smaller so it's about the same size as those over there because uh, it's easier i got small fingers so it does come with an extra set of gears which you can see so you can do threading uh, i don't see as a beginner that you're going to be able to do threading uh, unless you have some experience but you can learn to do it uh, so i'm not going to rule that out and there's a chart on here i moved it uh, from where it was before up to here and it tells you different uh, pitches and whatnot for threading in the gears that you need to, to use for all that it tells you what and then uh, for the gears here the gears are really noisy and you can see that red grease there really really sticky stuff that stuff is called red and tacky uh, spray grease and that's what I use on there uh, so when it's moving, it doesn't fling off. You can you can see it. It sticks right on there, and it really helped quiet it down. But for the most part, it has this lever back here for forward reverse, so you can move that. Well, there was another gear right here, because I don't need all those gears turning when I'm turning something that's just for threading. So I simply just remove the gear. So the only thing that spins is the chuck the rest of these gears are just sitting dormant they're not moving there's no point in them moving all the time they just make noise without all those moving all uh, the thing is really quiet so uh, that's something that you can do and then if you're having problems with your readout here where it tells you how fast the thing is spinning because it's variable uh there's a little nub down on the bottom of this thing you'll see it it's like a little magnetic nub if I spin it around right there it is and it needs to be fairly close to this right here you don't want it touching it you know it needs to be like an eighth of an inch away but that's what makes the the rpm reading work mine was bent up and out of the way it wasn't even remotely close to it so uh the meter didn't work at all so that's what you're looking for there that little thing makes up with the uh, little circle in the bottom of this which reads your rpm it's also good like i have here to have some kind of table cover on there when you're turning to try and keep the wood chips all out of there or wood chips yeah wood lathe uh, metal chips out of there and uh basically i have a bucket that usually sits down here on the ground and most of the chips roll off of that and into the bucket but again you want to get the right tool for the right job i just have a piece of canvas up here because i know what i'm doing and but they make a regular bed cover for that uh, it's like a slinky type thing that or accordion that goes back and forth as you move the thing so and then if you're going to turn soft metals like aluminum that's not a problem but if you're going to turn hard metals like uh, graphite steel or carbon steel then you're going to need some coolant to put on there uh, especially if you're drilling and when you're drilling you want to drill slow not fast so for the most part uh you get what you pay for like i said uh it came with these carbide cutters those blue ones there which is basically good for boat anchors i guess i'm going to put them in a circle file and then i bought some uh carbide cutters there which you can see the tips are replaceable and those are quarter inch i have three eighths inch on order and they haven't come in yet and then they come with some allen wrenches and things uh not a regular wrench that's mine but those allen wrenches did come with it so for the most part it's not all that bad uh like i said it's a 600 hundred dollar tool I went in and readjusted everything, cleaned everything all up, uh, you know, to where I like it. Uh, I wanted to challenge myself a bit, so uh, I went in and made this miniature barbell to see how good it turned. Uh, you can see by my hand, that's pretty small, but it turned out good. I put, uh, drilled some holes in there, put some set screws in there to hold it on there. Uh, but it, it, it turned out pretty good. The, the center part is a grade 5 bolt that I, I cut down and uh, turned in there. And the rest of it's uh, aluminum. So uh, it did exactly what I had hoped it would do. So for the $600, you're getting what you pay for. I, I think it works pretty good. 
uh, considering that I had to go through and, and do a bunch of changes, but you are going to have to buy a lot of accessories and that's where they get you at, but I didn't buy any accessories from them. Uh, there's a lot of other companies that sell better accessories. So anyway, that's all I got to say about that. Good luck and have a great day.